Thank you, Rashi, for the introduction, and uh, thank you, TEDx Kanke, for providing me this opportunity to speak in such a in front of such a diverse group of people. And special thanks to Rajiv and his team and his volunteers for organizing this event. And uh, special thanks to Mr. Vish, um, Vikas Hirani for motiva motivating me to speak in front of you. Well. Um, Let's start, um, and I will be talking about achieving sustainable development goals by community awareness and uh, participation. Uh, some great talks uh, by the previous speakers about sustainability and what we should be doing and uh, what's the contribution of different sectors, uh, you can say. But one of the things that we kind of not include all the time is us, people community um, and we'll, I'll, I'll come to that uh, later what's happening and uh, why community is not that but involved in making uh, a sustainable effect or sustainable uh, uh, change in the society um, I'll start with this picture um, and uh, before I do that I'm an ecologist and uh, I do want to talk about ecology, but not too much. I'll just uh, start with this uh, simple natural ecosystem. Okay, what you see here are different communities. You have vegetation, you have trees, you have grasses, you have seaweeds, right? The vegetation community this is one aspect. You have many different kinds of fish or fishes. So those are fish communities. Then you have bird communities. These are different communities. In ecology, what we study is uh, any particular species of a community, how it interacts amongst itself, and then we also try to find out how it interacts with other communities. Okay, so how the uh, one kind of species of fish interacts with another kind of fish community, or birds, or vegetation. Okay, and if you take the total picture, Everything is interacting with something else, the environment, which is the water, air, right? So this is a very balanced system. Anything that you disturb in this system will have cascading effect in the entire ecosystem, okay? So let's move on to another uh, picture. It's a picture of a city, and this is our own Ranchi, okay? And we can consider a city as an ecosystem too, where people, that's us, form communities. And we are from various backgrounds forming different communities. And the environment that we interact with is, of course, air, water, right? But we have also man-made <coughs> um, system in there. So buildings, roads, those are all our environment, those are, those are the environment that we built. So we interact with that too. Now, it is also a delicate system. You damage one part of it, the entire thing collapses, okay? So let's take a look at a satellite image uh, of Rachi. Rachi used to be, I mean, Rachi is a big city right now, but it was not a very big city long ago. So here in this satellite image, uh, it was taken in 1984, uh, Rachi used to be a small little town with one major road and all the development was kind of concentrated along that road. Okay? In 36 years, in 2020, you can see how it has sprawled. Okay, with big roads, big major roads surrounding it, and the entire city has grown. And why did it happen, though? Why did we need so much development? The population, uh, the population has increased, right? So we'll come to that later on. But um, let's uh, let's look at this article um, or a study by Amit Kumar uh, et al that came out in Jur uh, Journal of Indian Society of Remote Sensing, what they found out, uh, they did a, 
they did a long term study of the expansion, the urban expansion in Ranchi. And what they found out is uh, the built up land area increased by 470% from 1927 to 2005. So that's in like less than 80 years, you had 470% increase in built up area. Um, in agricultural land, we, uh, we lost around 32% of the agricultural area. We don't see that, like a lot of the younger generation, we, we don't see that happening uh, on a daily basis. But if you compare that from 1927 till now, it's a huge, huge change. Vegetated land, especially in this article, they are, they are refer, uh, uh, referring to mixed use forest. That reduced by 77%. That's a huge, huge loss of forests. And all this is happening because population is also growing. And there are many factors why population of Ranchi has grown so much. But if we just compare the figures from 1927 until 2005 or 2011, from 46,000, it has gone to 1 million mark. That's staggering numbers. And so with population growth, rapid urbanization, and of course, the challenges that we are facing with the uh, global climate change, we are facing the consequences of increase in built up area because we need land to make new buildings, housing, schools, businesses, roads, right? Uh, our use of resources are growing too. We are consuming more electricity. We are uh, uh, buying more cars. We are uh, using more petrol and diesel and stuff like that. And in doing that, we are also increasing different kinds of pollution. So air, water, solid waste, plastic, soil, noise pollution, all sort of pollution, right? And all these factors will have negative impacts and the biggest impact that will have and that you can feel would be the public uh, health impacts okay and when you feel it when you are sick then you realize that oh something is really wrong so that is one of the important uh, negative impacts and of course we are losing uh, green cover we are polluting our soil water uh, our air and then as uh, mr uh, roshanal said there used to be uh, like a lot of tigers and uh, elephants in 1956. Those are all gone. So loss of fauna, right? And of course, it will uh, uh, it will have a negative impact on your economy, social, and cultural aspects of life too. And you you go to different uh, cities. You go to a, a, say Bangalore. You see these beautiful areas and see wow, this is such a beautiful city. One of the things that we miss in Ranchi is aesthetics. We lose the aesthetics of the, of the city as we um, grow this city, right? So all these things, the way it is uh, going on without proper planning is not sustainable. And how can we make our Ranchi a sustainable city, not only Rachi, but in, in general, a city sustainable. And this is not the only way. This is one of the ways and one of the big impactful ways where we can contribute in making a city sustainable, collaboration. Collaboration is the word that we need to make our city sustainable. Why? Because one entity can only go this far. Okay, if you need a, uh, like a complete change to happen. All of us from different sectors have to come together. We have to form a collaboration and the collaboration between all the stakeholders, right? Here I'm listing only few. These are not an exhaust, exhaustive list. This is not all the stakeholders. I'm just giving you an example. Public sector is a big example. They have all the resources. They, uh, they kind of drive the development. We need public sector. Private sector, they are doing their bit. 
academic institutions, they are doing the research, contributing to society, NGOs, but it's not a unified effort. They are all doing their part, but they are all independent, kind of, not always together. And one of the weakest link in this is the community. Where are we? What, what are we saying? Who is listening to us? Are we raising our voice? Those are the kind of stuff that I'm trying to say here. We people do not speak. And so whatever uh, we kind of depend on others to provide all this development to us, it's good for you. Here, take it. And we say, oh, that's great. Finally, we are getting some roads here. But that is not the way. We are the people who should have a say in the development process. And so why community involvement is absent? One of the biggest reasons is we don't have time. No time, no interest. Why? We are busy with life, right? We have stuff to do. We have families. We have to go to work. No time for this. So we can kind of ignore this whole issue. It's not coming to bite us just now, right? So that's the biggest, biggest uh, cause for non-involvement. We depend too much on political and government action. And the third is not my problem attitude. So for example, you see someone throwing waste on the road, and you do not say anything to them because it's not my problem. And the other person is also like, the waste is gone from my house, not my problem anymore. But we need to realize that every waste that is going out of the houses is a collective responsibility. We have to take that responsibility. We cannot just say it's not my problem. And the last one is lack of knowledge and awareness, just like I gave you an example, the not my problem example. Um, so, how can we uh, motivate communities uh, in coming together and try to achieve some goals which are sustainable in the future, right? So, one of the main uh, things that we should uh, do is inform people why their opinion and participation matters. And... Um, it's because if we don't say anything, it, by assumption, it's like there is no problem. So we have to come up with our opinion. We have to raise our voices, our concern, to make people think or uh, to, to make others aware that th there is a pro problem and we need to address that, right? We need to connect with people. We need to go to each and every citizen of this city, organize in groups, listen to their concerns, give a priority to all the problems, and then we say that, okay, these are our, uh, these are our top, concern, um, uh, top concerns, okay? And then, not only that, so you can always go to a person and say, like, what is your problem? My problem is this, but what is the solution? We as a community, when we are providing a concern, we should also come up with a solution. We just cannot go and say, hey, we have a problem, solve this for us. You as a community have to brainstorm those and then uh, have meetings and uh, invite think tanks like uh, experts to help you out with that. And once you have everything, bring in all the stakeholders together and say, these are our problems, and these are our solutions. Please help us uh, to move on, right? Help us out here. And the last thing, the, the most important thing, is to spread the knowledge and awareness. And we can do that by organizing different events, like cleanup drives and all those, from a small little locality to a city level, OK? and. Uh, Media can be one of those big players where um, you, you come up with your concern and a solution and, and basically distribute in the media to the people. Here, 
the community involvement, an example, uh, the beach cleanup, one, one is in Daytona Beach in the United States, and the other one is, uh, on the right, is the Versova Beach. Okay, what you see is the people cleaning it, even the small little kids. If you, if you see kids on the road with adults cleaning the road, cleaning your neighborhood, I dare anyone can go into that street and throw a piece of garbage because they are seeing all the uh, kids working and cleaning it. So think about it. And Versova Beach, it's, it's, um, it's pretty remarkable. About 250 volunteers and uh, 180, I think, agency members, like municipal corporation members, cleaned that beach with like about 10 megaton of plastic. It happened quite recently. I forgot the year, but. And uh, finally, in this, um, as I wrap up my uh, presentation, uh, benefits of community uh, involvement. If you don't say anything, basically you are saying there is no problem. So come up with your concerns and your solutions and be heard, okay? Take it to the next level and present it amongst your stakeholders. Then um, we as a community can influence problem definition. What is, what is the definition of a problem, for example? Like government gives you all this, like I want to solve this problem. We say, this is not the major problem. My problem is actually this. So you define what is a problem. And then as the policies develop, you can actually influence those two. As I said, collaboration is a big way. Uh, and then you can also improve the governance by increasing the transparency, effectiveness, efficiency, and accountability. Okay? How? You can, uh, you can basically, as a community, um, keep a track of everything from the formulation of a policy to its execution and monitoring by asking questions and demanding answers at each and every phase of the development or uh, uh, the project. And so I'll end my talk, which I carried way too longer. So be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi said that, and as a community, I believe that we can make that change for our own well-being. Thank you so much.